Welcome back, folks. The time has come to start putting some of these redstone skills to use. What I'm going to show you today is how to build a fairly simple camouflage stone door. So this is an idea that I'm sure many people have thought of, especially once they discover sticky pistons. The idea to try to create a completely camouflaged doorway to your base so that you don't get, you know, unexpected visitors in your base griefing you and stealing all your items. Um, so what I've built is a completely, or nearly completely, camouflaged stone door that's reasonably simple to build. Um, this doorway is triggered by a button, and no, I don't mean that button. Um, I put that one up there to represent one of the locations you could place the button to trigger the door, um, but I don't think it's as effective as this one, which you probably didn't even notice. I will admit they're very easy to see in profile, but when they're placed at eye level in the game, they're very hard to see. Uh, that is, stone buttons on stone blocks, or wood buttons on wood blocks. Uh, unfortunately, there aren't any other button types at the moment, so they're a little bit harder to camouflage against different surfaces, but if you have a stone wall that you want to use as an entryway to your base, I recommend using a stone button. Try to place it right at eye level. And I guess I should just get right to it. Let's show this in action. Push the button, doorway opens, we enter, and it closes behind us. And then if we want to get out, I've got another button to trigger it. So you push the button, exit, and the door closes behind you. So then it's entirely up to you to remember how to get in and out. But let's say you're in a situation where you want to open the door for a friend. Let's say you're in a multiplayer server and some somebody's like, hey, where's your base? And you want to just let them in. You can use the lever and keep it constantly open. And they can easily find the doorway to your base. And once they're in, you can close the door for you. Or you can close the door. All right, so how does it work? Well, here is all the circuitry that makes it work. It may seem like a bit much, um, but really everything that makes the doorway work happens right here. And all we do is for each button, we tack on a bleeder to each one of them. So before I dive into explaining this thing, I'm just going to make mention that uh, it uses two different gizmos that I've explained in a couple other videos. So I'm going to leave links to those, but that's the um, reverse behavior circuit and a bleeder, which I've got two of them for each button. So if you're looking for more detailed explanation as to what they are and how they work, uh, you can check out those videos. But right now I'm just going to explain why they were used. So a piston door is an excellent example of why you would want to use a reverse behavior circuit because what we need to happen is we need these pistons to retract first and then these pistons to retract after that um, when it's opening and then when it's closing these pistons have to extend first and then these pistons have to extend second. So that always has to happen so the, when the uh, entire circuit becomes powered or unpowered we want that reverse behavior to happen each time. So that's why we use a reverse behavior circuit. Now you notice this is much smaller than what I demoed in my reverse behavior circuit video, um, but I actually didn't really show you guys the smallest version of that um, in that video. So here it is. I mean, all I've got is the instant signal goes to this lamp here, and the slow signal goes to that lamp there. So when it becomes powered, this one goes on first, that one goes on second. And then we use the slow signal to reinforce the first lamp so that when we unpower it, that one unpowers first and this one unpowers second. So that's the, a very small, compact version of a reverse behavior circuit. And I'm basically using the same thing here, only I've added another repeater to act as a diode so that this signal does not get confused back here and so that this torch does not go any further than it's supposed to or go back that way or something like that. So yeah, that's all that's going on there. So it's entirely controlled by this torch, and this torch is basically keeping it in the closed state, as you can see. So all we need to do is supply power to the torch to open the whole thing. And as it turns out, the button does not send enough uh, signal power on its own to keep the door open long enough. So that's why we use the sustainer repeater or um, <laughs> bleeder thingies here. And all they are is uh, two comparator blocks kind of looped around that allow the button signal to last a little bit longer. So you can see it's still going there. And then when we supply it with a constant redstone signal from a lever, then it's always on, always open. And we shut off that torch, the whole thing becomes unpowered. Um, and that's it. 
So I made mention that you could put a button up here uh, relative to the door. I'm just going to show why that is. Um, if I wanted to use only one sustainer, what I would do is I would build out an area right here. You notice the button's on the other side of this. We'll just kind of fly over it. You can see it there. And here's what I'd do. We'd basically break this torch because we wouldn't want to use it anymore. And then we'd build one of our bleeders right here. And then extend that down right here. And then all you have to do is place a redstone torch at the end of this. You'd have to adjust this interior button position as well. So you'd want to put it on this bleeder circuit right there. And the lever as well, you'd probably want to put somewhere else. So here, I'll show how that would work now. Now only using one bleeder, we can open the door, get the same kind of timing. The buttons happen to be much closer to the door, so I think that is advantageous. You're also using fewer comparator blocks, so that's nice as well. But again, like I said, it's a little bit harder to mask that button than it is this one. So it's totally up to you. If you want a little extra camouflage, you'll probably have to use two bleeder circuits um, and have the buttons a little bit farther away from the door. Um, but if that's not important to you, then you can use uh, one bleeder circuit and accomplish it this way. And one last thing before I sign off, just want to make mention, check out the description. We've got a server going at mc.worldpresets.com. You can check it out. We're running the latest snapshot, trying to get it ready for 1.8, going for a healthy vanilla, my, or a vanilla survival experience. And you'll, there'll be some goodies in the spawn, but definitely just go check out the server. You'll see what we mean. We're, we're trying to go for something that's a little more unique than what you've seen before, uh, prior to command blocks, that is. And if you're going to check out the server, you might as well check out the website, too. we got worldpresets.com. It's a really awesome website based off of uh, 1.8's introduction of customized worlds. So we've got uh, web-based calculators, generators, basically, for um, customized worlds and super flat worlds. And you can create them and post them with our community and share them, basically. So if you're ever, like bored of your world and want to find something that somebody else has come up with, you can go to our site, worldpresets.com, and check out what other people have made, and you might find something that is totally, totally new and refreshing to you. So that's it, guys. I'll catch you next time for more redstone goodies. Uh, eventually, we're going to get into the bigger stuff. I keep promising that, but trust me, it's coming. So relax. Bye, guys. <laughs>